Well, philosophy, as, as all things, all things that human beings, all activities that human beings are engaged in is a whole lot of different things. It's uh, an attempt on the part of uh, uh, folks to think about the ultimate questions to which there are no clear answers or no answers that we can all agree on. My students, as soon as I tell them that these questions cannot be answered in any decisive way, often respond with great you know, puzzlement. Um, like, so, so, so why even go after them? Forget it, you know? That's one of the things it is. It's also a skill, a skill of thinking. Uh, thinking in, in ways that um, open the imagination and at the same time are critical. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's an important part of what philosophy is. I think a lot of students when they start out think philosophy is going to be just them talking about the opinions they already have and that all the opinions will be equally acceptable. And there's a real um, discomfort in the first few weeks of class when I push them on their opinions and I try and have them put them in terms of some of the theories we're studying. And all of a sudden they realize this is going to be work and it's going to be hard work and not only work in first before you can use or argue against a theory, you have to understand it well, and I'm going to demand that they give a charitable and tolerant view of, the, of every view that we're reading and then have to articulate their own view with defenses um, and an understanding of the counter positions. They usually say this isn't as much fun as I thought it would be and don't want to do that. So I do try and balance it with times to have debate and to bring in those opinions, but I'm always pulling it back to the work that goes with it. What I get paid for is a variety of things, and some of it is philosophy per se, but a lot of it has to do with um, taking not very well motivated students, some are, some aren't, and um, introducing them to some things that the university decides is important. So I spend a lot of time in terms of uh, getting students to read, uh, reflect, helping them write better, uh, grading that, and there's usually some philosophical dimension to that, but a lot of it is not. To some extent, I'm getting paid to deal with what some folks would regard as obvious, and I think that's a lot of what philosophers do is take what is right in front of us and coming to uh, appreciate it and understanding and looking at, looking at it in a little different perspective than what most people do. Um, and students and others um, often have difficulties seeing why we're paying so much attention to this, that, or the other thing when they form some judgment already and they see no need to uh, pause and they just want to keep right on going with their lives. I say well and good, but if you ever do get um, troubled by something or perplexed by something, here is how you could go about thinking about that and getting to a better understanding as needed. Everyone always asks, what can you do with philosophy? And I have a, a smarty pants answer, which is be a more reflective democratic citizen. And I do think that the cash value of being a philosopher has to do with a certain kind of life. Not that all people who study philosophy get that kind of life, and not that there aren't people who don't study philosophy who get that kind of life. But that is the goal of philosophy, is to help cultivate a sort of reflective character and to uh, facilitate the, I'm not ashamed to say it, moral growth of the uh, students. A question comes up then, well, what does philosophy do in the transition to the wide range of occupations, life activities, if it's not a pre-professional degree? Well, here are some of the things that all business people say they want. They want good writing, clear thinking, the ability to articulate problems well, to reflectively decide on what's the most likely solution or the best of the available solutions or approaches, they might not be solutions. 
And I think philosophy helps with all of that, cultivating analytic skills. I think that what you try and do in classes is present people with a history of certain problems and possible answers and way people have looked at them, and also present them with problems that they haven't even thought of yet, that they need to throw into the mix when they're trying to decide things. But that's all very indirect. You don't go into this to get rich. Uh, you get into, you, I, I think you get into it, you know, partly for what I said, for uh, personal satisfaction in, in studying things that you find valuable. The other one is for thinking, for me, is thinking that somehow you're doing good in the world. You're, you're in a profession that is not causing harm. You're not polluting. You're not, uh, you're not hurting people. Yes, ca thinking causes pain, but it, it, it's, it's good pain, you know, like exercising. Uh, you're, you're, you're doing something important. When philosophy departments are asked to show what are you producing, you know, it's hard to quantify that sort of stuff. Ask the students in five, ten years. It's hard to tell a review board that, but that's, that's where the rewards are going to come from. Down the line, they're going to contact you, you're going to run into them again, you're going you're to find out that they did something in their lives that was somehow influenced by maybe something you said. That's tremendous. I think in the long run, though, philosophers have to stick to their guns with regard to the ends that are intrinsic to the practice to talk like Aristotle and McIntyre. And that is the cultivation of a kind of character built around reflection and responsiveness, uh, analytical rigor, synthetic imagination, and I think a moral sense of purpose, that it's important to be reflective. And if someone thinks why ask why is uh, an orientation that's compatible with a full human life, we should take a stand and say we don't think so. There's a funny joke on this uh, Stanley Cavell line about um, whether or not the unexamined life is worth living. And his reply is the unexamined life is not worth examining. <laughs>